What's going on, man? Charlie in the box. Check it out. Look at what I got in my box today. It's going to be a two-part series. The first one's going to start right here with this timeline and a question I have for you. Okay, what I need you to do after this question is give me a good freaking answer. Think about what I'm saying. Try to contemplate everything. And, and I'm not going to give you the answer to it until the video of next week. Because I try to put a video on every week. So this is going to be the first one. I got part two over there. And check this out. Okay, see, look, we got a timeline right here. And this line right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, that's going to be 2011. And we're going to go right here, timeline. When we go way over here, this is going to be 25,000 years in the past. Over here, way over here. But see, with this line right here, this is the timeline. But I'm going to use this as a line right here, this red one, as our, the way we lived our life on this planet. It was really primitive. And things were really simple right here. Because <coughs> we pulled everything by ox. We, we lived by candlelight. Uh, we didn't have running water. We didn't have uh, TVs and all that kind of stuff. So our lives were really simple in all these years. So we start going in the future and we just keep going thousands of years. We're going and 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 going. Well, right up here, this is when Jesus was born. So we keep going and coming up to Jesus and we're like, hey, Jesus, the Savior of the world, the Messiah. And he died for our sins. But remember Jesus, he made his mom a table, I believe, because he was a carpenter. So by then we were eating off the ground and things really never stayed the chain because we didn't get no past this. Because our, 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 the way we lived our lives were really simple. Okay, now we're getting closer to 2011. But before we get to 2011, as you know, there was a change that happened from when Jesus was born to we were at now. Something changed right here. Well, if you start learning these things, something happened 235 years ago from this year, 2011. So if you rewind it 235 years ago, like right here. So think about it. From right here to right here, thousands of years. And if it stood all the same all this way, but right here at 235, something changed. And then we started inventing uh, the car. Uh, let's go fly in the air. DVDs, CDs, Betamax, Nintendo, VCRs, processed food, and all the other technology that we just take advantage of today as Americans and everybody on the planet just skyrocketed. So if these were 25,000 years, but it was really primitive for all these years and things really never changed. What happened in, on our planet right here, 235 years ago? What happened? And that's my question I have for you. What happened to us as mankind 235 years ago in the past right here? Because everything stood the same, people. But something happened here. Something had to have happened here that changed it all, that just skyrocketed our technology and our way of life of being more comfortable. What was it? That's the question I have for you. So hopefully you guys come up with a good answer of understanding what I'm asking you here. I'll give you the answer, like I said, next week at the end of the video. I put a new video on every Friday. So uh, I got part two. Come check it out and hope you guys like it. Part two. Okay, check it out. This is how it's going to go. You're going to have two people. The average American and Charlie the Box. The average American and Charlie the Box both has $1,000 in the bank. See, the smart American that believes that government is doing good, things are getting better, and believes everything very sartorial, tells them is going to keep the thousand dollars in the bank. But Charlie in the box really don't believe everything Barry Satoro says. They really doesn't understand how the federal government got control over the monetary supply of the United States government. So Charlie in the box is going to actually take that money out of the bank, and he's going to go buy some silver coins or gold, whatever you prefer, but we're going to see how if you keep your thousand dollars in the bank or you put your money into some silver or gold behind you, see what happens through the year. Okay, so you got this January over here, December over here. Each month, what your government is doing is printing $75 billion a month. But when your government prints that $75 billion a month, what they're actually doing is they're creeping into your bank account and taking out like, say, $4 a month. Because, see, when you overwhelm the money supply out in the world, it devalues your dollar. So it's deflation of your dollar. So in the end, when the, the, the months go by and we want to cash in 
both of our things, you're going to look at your bank statement and it's going to still show you that you have $1,000. But say at the end of the year, I want to cash these in. I'm going to get my $1,000, because remember that's what I paid for it, $500 each. That's not the real price, I'm just giving you an example. So I'm going to get my $1,000 back, but I went and got an extra, extra 60 bucks. But you can't, you got uh, $2.50 because you kept your $1,000 in the bank, but I put mine into silver. Why did I get so much and you got a lot less? It's, it's not the fact that the, the, the prices of silver went up so much. It's the printing of your money. By them printing that $75 billion a month, they devalued your money. So the inflation of the natural resources, like your, your, your gas, when you go to the gas pump every, month, every week, do you notice that gas is going up right now during winter? It's because it's not that there's not enough gas or there's not enough silver. It's because they're printing more and more of this money and, and it's being rendered useless. It's like, it's like monopoly money because they just printed too much of it out. Okay. Well, what's going to happen at the day when the China, Italy, Germany, and every other country that handles United, United States currency, because this is what's been the, the gold standard of currency throughout the world for the ages. Well, right now, all those countries want to get off this money. Well, say you have your $1,000 and I have my $1,000 in coins still. When I go to turn in my coins, they're going to give me probably $800 of the thousand that I gave them because the, the, the market is different with the new world order currency than the money that we have now. So if you have your thousand dollars of American money and you, when you give it to the new world order because they're going to give you a new world currency, but when you do that, they're only going to give you probably, let's say 60 to 80 dollars on your thousand. But why would you, if you gave them a thousand dollars of United States currency, why would they give you 60, 80 dollars? of New World Order currency. It's because this money is being rendered useless. They're devaluing it. So it's going to cost you more and more of United States currency to buy anything that you want. Food, gas, uh, electricity, tires, anything you want. This money is being rendered useless. It's being devalued every day that your government prints $75 billion. They're printing that money just to keep the doors open, just to keep the facade of the stuff that's going on in our country so the American people don't see it. Because these are things that are happening behind the scenes. But if you're not putting all this together, you're not going to understand the games that are being played within your politics and your politicians. See, if you can't afford to go buy these, these are going to cost you like $30 to $40 each coin. And I'm buying two of these a week now because I want something for my family to fall back on because this is being rendered useless. But if you can't afford to do that or buy silver, which is more expensive than this, what you could do is you could go to the, the stores and banks and ask them for all their old 50 cent pieces or their silver dollars. See, I went to the stores and I got the 50 cent piece. This was given to me as a 50 cents, but if I were to go to the store that I bought these from, they would give me $6.50 for that little 50 cent piece because it's made up of 90% silver. You understand? This, has, this only has the reputation of the United States government backing it. But this is hard, cold, natural material that everybody wants in the world. So which one's better? Something that everybody wants in the world or a piece of paper that somebody tells you is worth $20. Remember, if you're not going to do everything in your power to restore this country and fix the problems that we have, you're going to do everything in your power to destroy it.